Hi and welcome. My name is Julianne Cost, and on this episode of The Complete Picture, we're going to really take a look at some of the maybe the most commonly asked questions that people have about opening files when they're in Lightroom and they're going to Photoshop. Now, this isn't a general overview. I already did that, that video and it's been posted. Um, you can see that it's called Moving Between Lightroom and Photoshop. So if you just do a search for that on Adobe TV, you'll find it. And in that movie, I really explain how you would use either Edit In or use the export dialog boxes and, and how to set up presets and how to work with you know larger volumes of images and also how to hand off files. Maybe you've got a panorama or an HDR. All of that is already covered in depth in that movie. What we're going to talk about today are really the things that kind of make you think twice and go, wait a minute, I'm not really sure how that works or, or where did my file go? So that's what we're going to look at. Let's go ahead and switch over here and start in Lightroom. And the first question that I always get is when people are working with their raw files and they use the command under the photo menu and they say edit in and they edit this in Photoshop CS5, when Lightroom renders that file and opens it in Photoshop, why does it say in the menu bar here that it's a CR2 file? Now that just happens to be Canon's raw file format. If you were shooting with Nikon, it'd be .nef or whatever the file format is that you're working with. So the reason that that still says CR2 is because this file doesn't actually exist anywhere. Now I know that seems a little bit weird, but let's go back to Lightroom and see what exactly is happening. If I go to the Lightroom Preferences and we go here to External Editing, this Edit in Adobe Photoshop CS5 1, these are the default settings that you can set up to tell Lightroom how to render, how to create the file that it's handing off to Photoshop. So in this case, Photoshop, you can see it, the file format I have set for my preference, my default is a TIFF Pro Photo 8-bit. Now I can change that if I want to, but that's not the point. The other video covers all of that. What I want to tell you is when we go over here to Photoshop, it's not until you actually save this file. So I'm just going to grab my paintbrush and honestly, um, let's just go ahead and paint something here um, so that we can see that this is obviously a different file from the original. So as soon as I hit save, and, and that's all I want to hit, right? I don't need to hit a save as because this isn't going to be the raw file. This, as soon as I hit save, it's going to save the TIFF file. Now, Photoshop, when you're in Photoshop proper, this is a pixel-based editing program. So we can't actually be working on the raw file in Photoshop. Now, you might, that might be a little confusing because some people are thinking, well, wait, I go from bridge into Camera Raw. Yet in Camera Raw in that plugin, you can work with your RAW file. But once you're in Photoshop proper and you're trying to do pixel-based editing, so meaning this isn't a smart object or anything, this is just a regular pixel-based TIFF file, it's a pixel-based file. So when I do Save, Command S, you'll notice that it went ahead and it added the extension .tiff. So it knew that I wanted to build a TIFF file because that was my preference that I set in Lightroom and as soon as I save it, sure enough, it renames the file for me. But I think it can catch people a little bit unaware and you look at that raw and it, it might be a little confusing. So why did mine also change the name? That's something else that I have set up here in Lightroom. You'll notice if I go back into those presets, right here under external edited, this is my master edited template. So I just added ME after it, not because it's mine for me, but because that I know it's my master edited file. Okay, so back to Photoshop, let's close that image and we'll come back to Lightroom. And you will see that right here next to my original file is the TIFF file. Okay, now before we move on, I, I want to show you um, another difference here. And that is if I click on this CR2 file again, and we do choose to edit in Photoshop, and I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut Command or Control E, that just jumps over to Photoshop, it renders that file. But if I decide at this point I don't want this file open, if I close it without saving changes and we go back to Lightroom, it doesn't create that file. The reason I bring this up is that if you're using a preset, which again I show you how to set up in the, the previous movie there, but if you use a preset and I say edit in and I say I want to open this as a TIFF, as Adobe RGB, as 8-bit, it will go ahead and render that file. It brings up this dialog box, but I'll click edit. 
it will render that TIFF file. I've actually told Lightroom to build the TIFF file. So even if I don't make any changes, but I just close the file and we go back to Lightroom, you can see that it's actually made that file. So if I didn't want it, I would have to go ahead and throw it away. But I just want to let you know that that is a difference. If you just use the edit in command, decide you don't want the file in Photoshop and close it, you won't get a rendered file. If you use a preset and say, Lightroom, please build that file for me and then show it to me in Photoshop. Since Lightroom has already built the file, that file will automatically be re-imported into your Lightroom catalog. Okay, the second question that I always get is, and this happens quite often, um, you have an image, like let's take this one now, in Lightroom, and you're going to open this up into Photoshop. Now, if I do this right now, everything will work as is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to set this up to fail by changing my sort order. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change my sort order to something other than like capture time or file name. Because if it's set to file name or if it's set to capture time, the two images will appear right next to each other. So let's change this maybe to added order. All right, so you can see it kind of resorted the window here. And now I'll go ahead and edit this just Command E or Control E to edit in Photoshop. Again, I'm just gonna use my brush tool in order to paint something on this image. So we've got our brush tool, I scribble on it, I do a save, and then I do a close. This time when I go back to Lightroom, you'll notice that it's taken me to this file, but it's at the end of all of my other images because I've got my sort order set to added order. So if you're used to the images coming in right next to the original, this can really throw people. They're not sure where their file, maybe they're not even sure where their original file went. But if we just change this back to capture time or if we change it back to um, a sort order like file name, then they will always appear right next to each other. Okay, so some other things that can also throw you there as far as um, why you might not be able to see the image. If you're in a smart collection, you might, um, the, the newly created file might not have the same parameters and therefore it might not automatically be added to that smart collection. So just be aware of that as well. Now, let's do this. Let's open up this TIFF file for a minute. All right, and the reason that I'm opening the TIFF as opposed to the camera raw is because when I open the TIFF, I'll just use Command E or Control E again, I'm gonna go ahead and edit the original right now. Because if this was a multi-layered document, and I said edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments, then Lightroom would have to flatten it. I don't want it flattened. I want, let's say, you know, if hypothetically this was a layered file and I wanted the layers, then I need to edit the original. So I'm gonna go ahead and click edit, and that brings this up. Now, I'm gonna do something else to it. Just a quick invert, Command or Control I, just so that we can see that I've made a change to it. Now, let's say that I don't want to save this over the original TIFF file. Instead, I wanna save this as some other file format or um, as another version of it. So I'll do a save as, so file, and then save as, and I'm gonna save this as, actually, let's just change it to a PSD, all right? So here's my PSD file. I'm saving it in the same original folder, but when I hit save, and then I close the file, and we come back to Lightroom, we're not gonna see that image, right? Well, let's say maybe it's just not in the collection, so let's go to the original folder. So I right, right mouse click and say, go to folder and library. It takes me to that folder, but I still don't see the image. So here's what happened. You had an original TIFF file in Lightroom and you handed that file off to Photoshop. Photoshop is well aware of that TIFF file, but you kind of tricked Lightroom. You said, I'm not gonna save the TIFF file. I'm gonna go save another derivative of this file as a PSD file. Well, at that point, Lightroom's like, throws up its hands and says, I don't know what you're doing over there in Photoshop, so I can't keep track of the image. However, it's really easy to solve the problem. We have this feature called Synchronize Folder that I don't see a lot of folks use, but it's super handy. If I choose Synchronize Folder, it knows that there's a new image in that folder, and I can choose to show the import dialog box if I want to. In this case, there's really no need to, so I'll just hit Synchronize. Now, what am I seeing? Well, I'm seeing under here under catalog settings, my previous import, this is what I've just imported using the synchronize. And sure enough, if we right mouse click and say, go to the folder and library, 
there is that PSD file. All right, so that just might be a workflow that you're using that might kind of throw you, so I wanted to mention that. Another one, all right, let's take, let's go back to this TIFF file for a minute. All right, and let's open that up into Photoshop, Command E or Control E to edit the original again. Now let's say we save this as a JPEG. So I do a file, save as, we change the format here to JPEG, and I click save, okay. We'll close this, and we'll go back to Lightroom. Again, I don't see the JPEG file here, so let's try that synchronize again. So I hit synchronize folder, and it doesn't say that there's any new photos to import. However, when we come back to Lightroom, look what's happened to my PSD file. It is now associated that JPEG file with the PSD file. And why is that? Well, let's go to our preferences again. We'll go to general and look right here. We have an option to treat JPEG files next to RAW files as separate photos, but it is not turned on by default. And the reason it's not turned on by default is for those people using the, the workflow where they're shooting RAW plus JPEG. We don't want to treat those as separate photos, so by default this is off. But if I turn this on and then close this and then tell Lightroom to synchronize the folder again, look what happens. It says, oh, I'm sorry, now there's an independent JPEG that should not be associated with any PSD or TIFF files, so let's synchronize this. It brings in the image. Again, if we say, we right mouse click and say, go to folder in the library, sure enough, there is now my independent JPEG file. So you can see why I might get questions about this, because you really kind of have to, have to figure out how Lightroom is thinking in order to solve some of these issues. Okay, two other ways that they might not be imported. Um, if you open a bunch of images, from Lightroom to Photoshop, but then drag all of those images into like a new document? Well, since you didn't hand off the new document from Lightroom to Photoshop, since you just opened the new document in Photoshop, Lightroom's not going to be aware of that new document. So again, you would need to use that little trick to just synchronize um, the folder where you've saved your new Photoshop document, the new layered document. And the other time that I've had Lightroom not keep track of the images, which of course makes sense after the fact, is if I've opened a bunch of images into Photoshop, and then I quit Lightroom, and then I work all the images in Photoshop, and then when I'm done, I save and close it, well, because Lightroom's closed, how would Lightroom know that it's getting images handed back to it? Of course it doesn't. So that's the other time where I've had to use that synchronize in order to re-import those files. Okay, finally, the last question that I'm going to answer today is how, or actually the question usually is, can I just have Lightroom automatically put my PSD and my TIFF files into a folder for me? And the answer to that is very short. No, you can't set it up that way by default. But here's the thing. When you're, when you're in Lightroom and you hand off the file to Photoshop, you can do a save as and save to a specific folder. But what I actually think is easier is if I know that inside this point raise folder, I want a subfolder and I want to add all of my TIFF files or my PSD files to that subfolder, I would simply create the subfolder. So you can right mouse click or on Mac you can control click if you don't have a two button mouse and just create a folder inside Point Reyes and call this like PSD. And we'll just hit create. Now I know some of you will never want to do this, like you'll always want to save your originals and your PSDs or your TIFF files right next to each other. Well. And that's fine, but there's a lot of folks who also want to keep all their master files together and then keep all of their kind of edited master files together. So this workflow is more for them. So how am I going to quickly just find all of my PSD or TIFF files? We can do that with just a filter. So under here, under metadata, you'll notice that by default there's no filter for file type, but any of these headers here have an entire list of things that you can filter by. So one of them is file type. So if I wanted to quickly find all of my TIFF files or all of my PSD files, I could go ahead and use this filtering. And of course, once I set this up, like if I want to go ahead and search for all my Photoshop files and my TIFF files, now we've got four of them here, what I would do is I would just save this as a custom filter. And you can see I've already done that. I have a filter for PSD and TIFF files. So the next time that I'm in a folder and I want to find them all, I don't even have to go to metadata and change the file type or anything. I just come here to my filter and I say, let's look for my PSD and my TIFF files. Excellent, here they all are. I could do a quick select all and we could just drag them into the PSD folder. 
now. I know what's going to happen when you do this. If your images are stacked, it's going to take your TIFF files or PSD files plus the original CRW or NEF or RAW file. So it'll take your master original RAW plus the derivative file. That might or might not be what you want. If it is not what you want, you really have two options. You can either unstack them, right? And I know these files are stacked because look, this little icon right here tells me that that's a stacked file. So I can either unstack them before I drag them, or I can set this one little checkbox um, to not stack images by default. But that checkbox is a little difficult to, <laughs> to find, so let me just show you how to get there. Okay, the key here is that you should either open a JPEG file or a TIFF file or a PSD file. Don't open a RAW file or you won't get the dialog box. So let's come up here. We can pick any TIFF file and then choose the edit in command. When I choose the edit in command, if I'm working, because see, if you, if you choose a RAW file, you're just going to get taken directly to Photoshop. It's just going to render that PSD or TIFF file, whatever your settings are set to. If you choose a TIFF file or a JPEG file, you'll get this dialog box. And in here, as soon as you say edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments or edit a copy regularly, you'll get this option to stack with original. However, here's another gotcha. You won't get this option if you try to edit in from a collection. You have to be up here in your folder area, not the collection area. If you're in the collection area, you don't get this option. See how mine says stack with original? That's the default. So that every time I do an edit in, Lightroom will courteously stack my original with my PSD file, which of course means when I drag the PSD file to my new PSD folder, the original comes with it. If you don't want that to happen, uncheck the stack with original. Now by default, every time I edit into Photoshop and I come back, the images will be unstacked. Therefore, when I run my filter and find just my PSD or just my TIFF files and I drag them into that subfolder, only the derivative files will come across and not the originals. Finally, one last thing, just a reminder here. If you're using the export menu instead, a lot of people overlook this little option right here, this add to catalog. If I have 20 images and I need to export them, and maybe I'm exporting them as PSD files or as TIFF files, and I want Lightroom to automatically add those TIFFs or PSD or JPEG files into the catalog, you would want to check this box. So just don't forget that if you're exporting a large volume of images. Well, excellent. That takes care of all of those kind of nitty gritty problems that I find customers run into when opening their files from Lightroom, going to Photoshop, and bringing those files back to Lightroom. My name's Julianne Cost. Thanks for joining me. I hope to see you again on another episode of The Complete Picture. Thank you.